I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 357. Most Holy Trinity, I trust in your infinite mercy. God is mercy, and so I, his child, have every claim to his divine heart, and the greater the darkness, the more complete our trust should be. I do not understand how it is possible not to trust in him who can do all things. With him, everything. Without him, nothing. He is Lord. He will not allow those who have placed all their trust in him to be put to shame. January 10th, 1935 Thursday In the evening, during benediction, such thoughts as these began to distress me. Is not perhaps all this that I am saying about God's great mercy just a lie or an illusion? And I wanted to think about this for a while when I heard a strong and clear inner voice saying, Everything that you say about my goodness is true. Language has no adequate expression to extol my goodness. These words were so filled with power and so clear that I would give my life in declaring that they came from God. I can tell this by the profound peace that accompanied them at that time and that still remains with me. This peace gives me such great strength and power that all difficulties, adversities, sufferings, and death itself are as nothing. This light gave me a glimpse of the truth that all my efforts to bring souls to know the mercy of the Lord are very pleasing to God. And from this springs such great joy in my soul that I do not know whether it could be any greater in heaven. Oh, if souls would only be willing to listen, at least a little, to the voice of conscience and the voice, that is, the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. I say, at least a little, because once we open ourselves to the influence of the Holy Spirit, He Himself will fulfill what is lacking in us. New Year, 1935 Jesus likes to intervene in the smallest details of our life, and He often fulfills secret wishes of mine that I sometimes hide from Him, although I know that from Him nothing can be hidden. There is a custom among us of drawing by lot on New Year's Day special patrons for ourselves for the whole year. In the morning during meditation, there arose within me a secret desire that the Eucharistic Jesus be my special patron for this year also, as in the past. But hiding this desire from my beloved, I spoke to him about everything else but that. When we came to the refectory for breakfast, we blessed ourselves and began drawing our patrons. When I approached the holy cards on which the names of the patrons were written, without hesitation I took one. But I did not read the name immediately, as I wanted to mortify myself for a few minutes. Suddenly I heard a voice in my soul. I am your patron. Read. I looked at once at the inscription, and it read, Patron for the year 1935, the most blessed Eucharist. My heart leaped with joy, and I slipped quietly away from the sisters and went for a short visit before the Blessed Sacrament, where I poured out my heart, but Jesus sweetly admonished me that I should be at that moment together with the sisters. I went immediately in obedience to the rule. Holy Trinity, one God. Incomprehensible in the greatness of your mercy for creatures and especially for poor sinners. You have made known the abyss of your mercy, incomprehensible and unfathomable as it is to any mind, whether of man or angel. Our nothingness and our misery are drowned in your greatness. O infinite goodness, who can ever praise you sufficiently, can there be found a soul that understands you in your love? O Jesus, there are such souls." 
but they are few. St. Faustina here shares about a temptation to doubt God's mercy and goodness, and Jesus very strongly reassures her of his mercy and goodness. Along with the words she hears in her heart, she receives a profound peace that could only come from God. That peace is very interesting. She describes it. She said that it gives strength and power that all difficulties, adversities, sufferings, and death itself are as nothing. So we can imagine this is the kind of peace that the saints and the martyrs received, and this is what we want to receive as well to help us through this life. Now, the evil one doesn't want Faustina to convince people of God's goodness, but Jesus very much wants this. So there's a real spiritual battle that is always taking place. But we know, of course, that Jesus is the ultimate victor. We do need to discern where inspirations come from. Here, the temptation to doubt God's goodness definitely did not come from God, especially coming as it did during the benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. It was a temptation to despair. The Holy Spirit will help us to stay on the right path if we open our heart to him. Then St. Faustina shares a charming story of how Jesus wants to please even St. Faustina's unspoken desires. Nothing is hidden from him. It teaches us that Jesus truly loves us and he desires our happiness. Finally, Faustina writes a beautiful prayer to the Holy Trinity. We can't comprehend the greatness of God's mercy, but we should at least try. So let's strive to appreciate Christ's love for us and to always thank him for it.